As respected and loved as George Washington was, he couldn't run the country alone. So Washington handpicked four brilliant men to comprise his cabinet. He invited secretaries of war, state, and treasury, and an attorney general to help him with this ultimate test of self-government, independence for young America. While these men were supported to unite the country and hold it together, they very nearly destroyed it. Thomas Jefferson, Secretary of State, and Alexander Hamilton, Secretary of the Treasury, were direct opposites, with different life experiences, values, and wildly polarizing political perspectives. If you'll just give my plan a chance, your plan infringes on the liberties we fought a war for, Hamilton. Were you on the front lines, Thomas? Did you know the taste of blood like I did? No, so don't speak of things you don't understand. Hamilton wanted to create a national bank and have the national government assume unpaid state debts. Jefferson strongly disagreed, maintaining that a national bank could not be created under the Constitution. Hamilton's financial plan is blasphemy. What if the states had already paid their debts? Will this plan tax the citizens of the South unnecessarily? And what if the manager of Hamilton's national bank Rich New Yorkers all, seeking only a pretty penny. Nonsense. We would only pay off this debt quickly to gain the trust of the national government. This is what we need now. Our citizens are unsure if we will survive another day. We need to convince them we are capable. And when we do, they will invest and become involved in the State of the Union. Say what you will, but under the Constitution, the government cannot create a corporation. How do you plan to weasel around that? The necessary and proper clause. The, this bank is the only way our nation will succeed. Cutting, creating it is imperative. Hence, Congress can and must take action. George Washington frequently sided with Hamilton when the two began quarreling, which was of constant annoyance to Jefferson. Silence! Hear Hamilton out. No. <laughs> if you are truly for the good of America, you must give my plan a chance and ignore the fact that all the power channels in New York and the North. I'm prepared to make concessions. I'm listening. What if we move the Capitol to Virginia? Bring up your plan tomorrow in our meeting, Alexander. Hamilton eagerly took this opportunity to propose his plan to the cabinet, showing his brilliant financial thinking to not just his peers, but the entire United States of America. Hamilton brought his essay to Washington with a final plea for its fair consideration. Well done, Hamilton. I support you wholeheartedly. If Washington supports it, so do I! You have surely ruined us. The papers will make a fool of you. Little did Washington know that Jefferson was going behind his back defaming him throughout the press. Hamilton, however, suspected. Sir, do you have any idea who may be writing these terrible lies about you? No, someone with a shallow mind and ample time on their hands, no doubt. Someone close to you, perhaps? Someone who knows you? Maybe someone you even trust, sir? Perhaps, but probably not. Maybe even someone like... Enough! How dare you suggest? I know what you've been doing. Do you? Yes, and I refuse to let it go on. Run off and tell Washington, then. Unless you already have, and he didn't believe you. Or oh, poor Hamilton, what will you do by yourself? Nothing for now. We will exist at odds, in a fragile state of compromise, until you forget this encounter ever even occurred. But then, watch out, for you know me, Thomas. I won't rest until this union is safe. Or would he? For Hamilton was doing the very thing he feared most, isolating Washington, and making him lonely due to his two closest advisers constantly clashing heads. But beneath this tension, something big was forming. Someone was about to break, to make a huge move in the constant quest for power, to put it all out on the table. But who?